Hi, I'm Safi. I'm a mentor at the ANU Makerspace, and today I'm going to be walking you through the steps of FFF 3D printing. For all of the 3D printers, as well as all of the tools generally at the Makerspace, the safe operating procedure is posted on or near to the machine or tool. These data sheets are also available on the Makerspace website. To begin with, please make sure that you have enclosed shoes and anything that's a tangling risk, things like long hair or hoodie cords, are put away or tied up so that they are not a tangling risk. Also, note that FDM or FFF printing is a process which involves a lot of things being heated to high temperatures. Please don't touch those things. Please keep other people in mind when you print. Only use one printer at once. The very first thing you need to do is get yourself something to 3D print. You can design your own object in a CAD program like Fusion 360 or a 3D modeling program like Autodesk Maya. You can 3D scan an object and clean it up in Mesh Mixer. Or you can download a model from a website such as Thingiverse. After you've obtained a model, you need to slice it for printing using Cura. Slicing is the process of converting a 3D model to G-code. G-code is a set of instructions which your printer can use to print the 3D model. Make sure Cura is in the correct mode for whichever printer you're using. One of the Ultimaker 2 Plus, 2 Plus Extended, or 3. As for which printer to use, in my experience, the 2 Plus or 2 Plus Extended print faster and are less prone to nozzle blockage, whereas the 3 has dual extrusion, meaning that you can print in two colours or with dissolvable supports. Also, if you want to print something that's especially tall, you can use the 2 Plus Extended. You should also set the filament and nozzle settings to whatever you'll be using, which is usually PLA and a 0.4mm nozzle. Import your model into Cura either by going File, Import, or by dragging it using Windows Explorer. Then select the settings you want for printing. Usually the default Makerspace profile for whichever printer you're using is good enough. If your object has overhanging parts, indicated with red areas on the prepare panel of Cura, you may want to print with supports. Otherwise, overhanging parts of your model may turn out stringy or melted looking, or the print might fail completely. This is because the printer can't put a layer of melted plastic in the air. It needs to be held up by something before it hardens. Supports come in two forms with Cura, normal and tree, which is experimental. You can also get models that are pre-supported or add supports in an alternative program like Mesh Mixer. However, I find that for the Ultimaker printers, Cura's ability to generate supports is adequate. After you slice it, an estimate in grams for the amount of filament you're using and also a time estimate would appear. These can be useful if, say, there isn't a lot of filament left and you don't know whether there's quite enough, so you can weigh it. Also, you can use the time estimate to see whether you might need to change some settings to make the print go faster, say, to make a deadline. If your print is going to take more than a day, consider doing it over the weekend. Save the G-code onto either a USB drive or SD card, depending on which printer you're using, and then unplug it from the computer and into the printer. Before printing, make sure you can use the filament. Members of the Makerspace can use up to 100 grams of Makerspace-owned filament, designated by the yellow Makerspace sticker. And after that, you can either provide your own filament from home or buy some for $30 per kilogram. All of the FFF printers in the Makerspace take 2.85 millimeter filament, and ABS is not allowed for use in the Makerspace. You can use the estimate that Cura gave you to see whether you're under that 100 grams. If the filament doesn't have a Makerspace sticker on it, it probably belongs to someone, so don't use it. If necessary, swap to a filament that you can use. If you don't know how to swap filament, ask a mentor or a staff member for help, or watch the tutorial video. If someone else's finished print is still in the printer, you can remove it and move it to the finished print box. Gently tap on the print bed to determine if it is adhesive enough. It should be just ever so slightly tacky. 
If you feel it's not quite tacky enough, you can ask a staff member for help. Write your UID, the identity of the filament owner, the type of filament, and the nozzle size on the small board in front of the 3D printer that you're using. To begin your print, use the dial to move the highlight to print on the menu, and then press the button to enter the print menu. Select your file using the dial to begin. The printer will then begin heating up. Depending on your filament, the nozzle will heat up to a temperature up to 260 degrees, and the print bed may become as hot as 80 degrees. For this reason, please do not touch either once this process has begun. Watch your first layer to make sure that it adheres properly, is evenly laid down, and fuses together. If not, follow the troubleshooting guide on the 3D printing cheat sheet, which is displayed in the makerspace. Finally, after you've watched your first few layers, you can feel free to leave and come back later to collect your finished print. You'll have an easier time removing the object if you wait for about 5 minutes after the print is completed. This is because fully cooled plastic is much easier to remove from the build plate. You can use the scraper tool if you need to, or you might just be able to pick it up using your hands. If you've printed with supports, then I'll make a video talking about how best to remove them later. But beware, it involves sprue cutters. Thanks for watching, and just remember if you need any help, you can ask the current maker on duty or you can refer to one of the various instructional posters which are posted around the makerspace. Thanks and bye.